they had two pints of warm beer and a pork pie in a wine lodge. An old lady in carpet slippers sat silently staring into a tumbler of dusty red wine. A stout man was cleaning his hearing aid with the bottom of his regimental tie. A stiff-legged dog with a grey muzzle snuffled in the sawdust on the floor and then cocked its leg against a hat stand. Well, it's better in than out, I suppose, Carter. Aye. When we came here on holidays, Carter, we used to stop in digs with Mrs Keenly side. Her husband suffered something chronic with boils and there was always pink tissue paper covering the top of her coal scuttles. I wonder if the house is still there. Let's go and have a look. Yeah, why not? Anything to avoid having another port pie. They left the wine lodge and Uncle Mort led his nephew down a side street, past a bicycle repair shop and a Plymouth Brethren meeting house. Do you remember the great Stanley Mortensen, Carter? Of course I do. Good. It's life in the younger generation yet. What's the colour of Crossville buses? Green. Clever dick. They came to a small square. There was a cracked horse trough and an Oxfam shop. They crossed it and wheeled into a long, drafty street with bronchial privets and grumbling pavements. They walked for half a mile and then Uncle Mort stopped in front of a house with a sign above its front door marked Villa Rawmarsh. Good God. It's still here, Carter. And it hasn't changed a bit. The same old unwelcoming exterior, the same threat of mince and carrots... The same old chill rasping out through the letterbox. I wonder if Mrs Keenly's side's still here. Well, let's knock on the door and see. It'll bring back memories, won't it? Well, that's what I'm afraid of. Carter Brandon stepped up the front path and rang the doorbell. After a while, the door was opened by a small, grey-haired lady with nicotine stains on her top lip and unzipped fur boots hanging round her ankles. Mrs Keenly sighed. After all this time. Do you remember me? No. I'm the one who was sick in the bath, the Whitson Tide of 49. I see. And are you the one what set fire to the coal shed in the back end of 36? No, Mrs. No, I'm afraid culpability doesn't extend that far. Do you think we could come in for a bit? No. Guests are not allowed on the premises between the hours of 10.30am in the morning and 5.30pm in the evening. Aye, but we're not guests, missus. We've got more respect for our stomachs. Then what do you want? I have the perfectly normal desire, missus, to show my nephew here the place where I spent some of the most miserable days in the whole of my life. I see. Are you any good at fixing up outside lavatories? Carter is. You are, aren't you, Carter? What? Fixing up outside lavatories, Pillock. Oh, hi. Uh, yes, I'm a dab hand at it. Uh, I've got certificates for it from the Workers' Education Association. Right, you can come in then. But eating your own food in the bedrooms is strictly forbidden. They followed her into the house. The gloom snuffled at their heels. The damp cowered. She directed Carter it's Brendan to the outside lavatory. She led Uncle Mort into the kitchen. Do you want a cup of tea? Are the cups clean? Not usually. Right, then. I'll make do with sucking the peak of my cap. A large black cat with a stunted tail and tattered ears was lying asleep among a jumble of half-empty tins of baked beans and overflowing ashtrays on the kitchen table, next to a budgie which was scraping in the bottom of its cage, knee-deep in husks and tacky droppings. How's your husband? Dead. Boils? No. He caught something off the budgie. I see. And did you go to the funeral? I think so. A large, grease-encrusted pan on the cooker began to spit and froth. From its depths there emerged a pulsating umbrella of fatty scum. And what culinary delight is that, missus? What day is it? Wednesday. Oh, in that case it must be mince. He's taking his time out there, is that lad? Do you fancy making yourself useful while you're waiting and cleaning out the budgie? Uh, no, Tom, Mrs. I don't want to risk messing up my kidney donor's card, you see. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I remember you now. It always rained when you stopped here, didn't it? That's right. And we had hailstones once. Ah, uh, they don't breed them like you these days, do they? No, it's the younger generation, you see. They don't breed old people now. I like you. 
Do you fancy a plate of mince? Pardon? Have a nice plate of mince and carrots. It does wonders for a man, does a plate of mince and carrots. You ask Foden. Who's Foden? My husband. But he's dead, missus. I know. That's why I've been condemned by the council this past 15 years. Pardon? They condemned me, owing to the circumstances of his death. I've not had no visitors here since the day they took him out, feet first, in his best chalk-striped trousers. <coughs> I see. I see. I've uh... been so lonely. No one to Hector. No one to Badger. No one to complain about at the dog biscuit shop. No one to watch on the petty early doors. Have a plate of mince. You can stop on illegal if you like. My terms are very reasonable, if you disregard inflation and the dirt. Oh, hell. Oh, bloody hell. Carter? Carter? Carter! What do you want? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you fixed it then, lad? Aye, it was the robin's nest in the cistern what caused the trouble. Good lad, you always was red hot as regards ornithology, wasn't you? And with that he took hold of Carter Brandon, steered him through the hall door, pushed him down the corridor and opened the front door. Then, Mrs. If there's anything else of a personal nature you want fixing, please don't hesitate to get in touch. I'll not leave me address just in case you're tempted. He slammed the front door behind him and headed at pace down the street, and led Carter Brandon to the wine lodge where he downed three large whiskies and a pint of stout. When he'd finished, he looked up and smiled weakly. <sighs> you were in a hurry, were you? Uh, no, I just escaped in time. I reckon she was proposing something of a rather intimate activity between man and woman with your socks off in the master bedroom. <laughs> you old devil, you. You old ram. Why didn't you take up an offer? <laughs> Simple. Because it would have involved stopping the night. And what's wrong with that? Well, everything. Tomorrow's Thursday. So? You don't know nothing, lad, do you? Thursday's boiled rissoles and cabbage. On their way home, they passed a ribble bus. It was red. Stephen Thorne played Uncle Mort. Peter Skellen played Carter Brandon. The narrator was Christian Rodska. Uncle Mort's North Country is written by Peter Tinniswood and produced by Pete Atkins.